Well, I want to welcome everybody and thanks for uh, joining us tonight here uh, for just a little bit of an informational call with, uh, with Todd, Chris, and I about United's operation uh, coming to, to Cortland here probably sometime in, in mid-April. And uh, I just wanted to, to jump on tonight with all of you, uh, talk a little bit about uh, United, talk a little bit about where we've been, where we hope to be going, and um, more than anything, probably have a Q&A uh, where if there's any questions, we certainly can, can help out and, and maybe at least point some people in the right direction. I think at this point for us to talk about every detail that's going to happen at, at Cortland this year is, is probably not even possible, um, even if we wanted to at this point with, with a new facility opening. But just to, to kind of start out, um, United Umpires was formed in, in 2014 um, with six Division I conferences and a Division III conference. Um, many things have happened between then and now, uh, but that collegiate uh, side of the business has, has continued to grow. And with Chris Marshall as our, our president there, um, and now assigning 17 conferences in, in the Northeast um, and from the Division Three junior college and at the Division One level. And um, probably of particular interest to some of you on this call is that, you know, between Chris and I, I would say we probably assign 95% of the schools, you know, in the upstate New York region, um, including the JUCOs, uh, all the D3 conferences, and then the D1 uh, schools that are up there, minus a few here and there, like St. Bonaventure. So um, that's that's what United has developed on the collegiate side. Uh, I think a lot of what we have built our brand on is umpire training, um, a good culture uh, for umpires, and the ability for umpires to improve, work hard, and, and hopefully move up the ladder. Um, whatever those steps might be. In 2019, um, the end of 2019, really heading right into when we all kind of got shut down for COVID, uh, United Travel Umpires was formed as the second arm of the United brand. And that company was formed in response to uh, an offer from Prep Baseball Report to coordinate their facilities in Indianapolis, uh, Atlanta, and at the time, the brand new facility in Kansas City. Um, 2020 was the first year that that facility was utilized or built, and it was the first year that we were with Prep Baseball Report. I think um, over that time, you know, we've had 40 field, a 40 field complex um, at its height in Indianapolis, probably about an 11 or 12 field complex at its height uh, in Atlanta, and probably Kansas City gets up to, to nine or 10 fields on its busiest weekend. And uh, we've been able to facilitate uh, baseball games all the way from, you know, nine and, up, nine and under all the way up through, through high school with some of the, you know, best opportunities being in the summer at our national championships at each of those facilities. Uh, I was approached uh, by my boss at Prep Baseball Report probably about two years ago with uh, the idea that they were going to expand to Cortland, New York, a locale that because of everything that we've done on the college side, uh, we really um, have a lot of experience in. Um, but at the same time, you know, understand that it's a, it can be a challenging area from the standpoint of uh, people and um, just having enough umpires. So through the last couple of years, um, we've worked with a lot of the area signers, Craig, I see you're on the call, um, to help fulfill and fill um, sporadic tournaments at the two field Gutchess facility. Um, and along with those two fields, there were some other fields um, used in the area. Well, just this past fall, um, and probably really just completed not too long ago, they've expanded Gutchess to four fields. Uh, really are planning on bringing everything that they do in-house uh, from a standpoint of not using a ton of non-Gutchess fields 
especially in the first year here. Um, and starting off a season sometime in April, which will go through the first week in August and then kind of pick up again in, in September and October. And, you know, with that and with that consistency, um, we are going to be bringing our program back in-house um, on a national level as we do in the other three facilities. Um, and our model has typically been to appoint an assigner who is local to the area, who works for United and, um, you know, is, is in a position to, to work with the umpires and, and fill games. And in Cortland, New York, you guys are very, very lucky because um, Chris Marshall will be taking the reins as the primary assigner uh, and at times site supervisor um, up in Cortland with, with the help of some other people. But um, you guys are in a position where someone who, uh, if you are looking to advance, there is probably no one in that area that can help you do that more than, than Chris, not only because of the positions he holds, but also because of his expertise, love for umpiring, um, and ability to, to really relate to, to umpires on almost every level. Um, so we are um, right now in the process of trying to figure out what the complex, what PBR are gonna be doing in the spring. Um, I certainly can tell you that um, the last weekend of March into the first weekend of April um, in conjunction with some of the local high schools and being assigned by the local high school assigners, they will be hosting a, a high school event um, I believe that will be their, their opening event. And, you know, as I said, I, with that being high school sanctioned, obviously that will be worked out amongst um, whoever the different high school assigners are in the area to, to take care of those schools. Um, and I just got word today that uh, probably Easter weekend uh, will be much of the same. Um, I know that they were planning to try to get some tournaments together in the April timeframe, but um, just kind of getting it off the ground and, and figuring out if, if some <laughs> of are going to take. I will say that um, regardless of what happens from, say, beginning to mid-April through maybe the middle of May, uh, once we hit uh, May 20th, which is probably the week before Memorial Day, uh, we're looking at a, a full schedule of games, you know, on four fields at the you know, 14U all the way through 17 and 18U levels with all those tournaments already being registered with at least 16 teams and, and some as high as 40 teams right now. So that obviously will entail not only four fields at Gutches, but a little bit more. So um, last thing I'll say is, look, I, I understand that there are a number of great places to work baseball games in this country, in probably the state of New York, and, and maybe even in, in the Binghamton, Cortland area. Um, we're not asking anybody to, to give us a steadfast commitment that they're going to work for United and not work for this or that or whatever it might be. We're here to offer an opportunity. I think that we've had a track record of success with what we're doing at the collegiate and travel sides here. And we're here to just promote and continue to promote baseball and umpiring, you know, in upstate New York. Um, and with that being said, I will introduce you here to kind of the other two guys you're looking at. Um, Chris Marshall is uh, on my left here, my right, I don't know, whatever it is. Um, and again, like I said, he is <clears throat> president at United Collegiate, and he also will be um, primary a signer contact at, at Cortland, you know, working with, with all of you and, and many others. And below me is Todd Marler, who is uh, the president of United Travel. Um, and he has a huge presence in all of our different facilities, um, getting them off the ground, seeing them continue to sustain themselves and um, ultimately working towards, I think what the basis of the whole company is, which is to promote culture for umpires and give them an opportunity to, uh, to succeed. So um, we're, we're looking forward to 
meeting, working with you, working with some faces we've worked with in the past. And with all that being said, I'll turn it over to Todd. Alex, thanks very much. Um, guys, I just want to say thank you for your time and giving us an opportunity to talk to you. Um, Alex really touched on everything, so I don't, I don't have a lot to say, um, but we're looking forward to getting to know the umpires there in the area and, you know, helping you guys uh, reach the goals that y'all have set for yourself. Um, you know, the one thing I would, I would suggest is if, if you get an opportunity, if you're on social media, you know, take a look at all of our social media outlets. Uh, it, every, every one of them is at United Umpires. Um, we put out a lot of content and a lot of information that way. Um, but really past that, you know, I look forward to hopefully meeting the majority of y'all and talking with you and working with you. And, you know, as we move forward tonight, if there's questions, hopefully we can answer those, but I'm going to step aside, let Chris, uh, talk cause he's going to be the he's going to be the main focus there in Cortland and be the guy that's helping y'all out. So Chris, go ahead. Thanks Todd and Alex. And, um, you know, a little bit about me. I, I live in Rochester, so I'm very familiar with the area, obviously New York state, um, umpired, you know, for quite a few years in college baseball, very familiar with that Cortland area, been down there many times as an umpire. And, you know, obviously in, recent years really the last five to seven years as a coordinator and um you know, I, i'm really excited about the opportunities there and it's really the biggest thing i want to touch on is the opportunities and and you know if if you're an umpire who's interested in potentially working college baseball for united then you know there's not a better place to work and spend some time and be around the people that will be in and out of there the mentors and the people that are there to help you and really that's the message that i have as well is you know, we're here to help and we're not here to, you know, create any uh, unhappiness or, or issues within that area, but more to support, you know, local organizations and give umpires opportunities. And really across the entire United brand, that's kind of what we look at as, as an organization is creating opportunities and supporting umpires when we can. Um, you know, speaking specific to the college baseball in that area, you know, there, there is a lot of junior college division three baseball up, you know, as far south as Scranton, all the way through the Southern tier in central New York. So once again, for umpires that are interested in, in progressing into the college game, there's numerous opportunities through Cortland, or if you're an umpire that just wants to get better and, you know, get on the field and see more plays and be better at, at the, the travel ball level or high school, you know, I think we can help with all that too. So really it's, the way we view it is a partnership and we're here to help you as umpires grow on the field and off the field and anything that we can do to support that and nurture that really, that's kind of what the three of us are all about. So Todd and Alex, it's really about all I have. I think Thanks, we can. Chris. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Um, let me just mention a couple of things before we kind of turn this thing loose to anybody that's got any questions um, just on a point of action. Um, if you're on this call and you have not registered with us, um, Todd Marler will put in the chat box a link to a registration form. Um, basically, it just you know gives us some per some personal information about you so that we can um, get you on some of our uh, circulations and things of that nature. Obviously, just based on where we are in in the year and where we are with with PBR and, and what exactly they've going to get scheduled with enough teams and how early that's going to start. Um, you know, there will certainly be a need for a second Zoom call where we really get into the, the absolute particulars of, of every single thing that's gone on and where Chris can start to talk about, you know, how it'll assign, when it'll assign, all those all those kind of things. But I will tell you, like, we understand that you're injecting or PBR is injecting probably an extra two, three, four, maybe five fields of baseball into an area that um, we don't know if there were enough umpires to cover to begin with. 
Um, so just understand that a national company is being involved because we have national resources and um, definitely we will be utilizing some umpires who are coming from, from out of the area and, and are being lodged. So, you know, I, I just, I, I never want to come in here and, and make everyone think like we don't understand everything that is going on in terms of not just central New York or Portland or everything, but everywhere. And um, we certainly have a, a boss behind us or a backer behind us who understands these issues and, um, you know, it is in hopes of, of meshing a, a nice product from central New York with certainly some, some outside help that, that we understand will be needed. So um, certainly wanted to let, let all of you know that. And, and that doesn't just extend to outside of New York. I mean, there's, if there's a expectation that some umpires say from Albany or Rochester or Buffalo want to come into to Cortland and, and help an umpire, there, there are going to be options um, for some very uh, affordable lodging, very close to the, to the facility. And we'll have, again, more information on that, but I know some of you have have stayed at the college suites at Cortland before. So I, I think it's a good option. And uh, again, one that we'll, we'll certainly have to utilize um, through, the, through the course of time here. So uh, just wanted to mention that. And then um, Todd will um, monitor the chat here. Um, so if anyone has any questions, um, you can throw those into the chat. Uh, I should have mentioned that earlier in case any one had anyone as we were talking here, but um, if you have any questions, certainly put them in the uh, chat here. Um, Carlos Flores, games in Georgia. I think you're already working in Georgia. Todd will take care of you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, Chris and Alex, this is Chris O'Keefe. How are you guys doing? I had the pleasure of coming up to uh, Cortland last fall with my family, and it was such a memorable experience. The people were awesome. Chris was outstanding. Um, I signed on tonight. I, I filled out one of the forms on Twitter for Travel Empires, just uh, looking for the opportunity to come up there uh, towards the end of the July and August, hopefully on a yearly basis with the family to uh, you know help you guys out and where the area so. That's why I'm here tonight. And Chris, I'm looking forward to working with you in North Carolina. It's the highlight of my year so far. So happy new year, guys. Good seeing you guys. Good to hear from you. And uh, I'm glad you've enjoyed your time up in Cortland. It's a very nice area in the summer and fall as well. So yeah, welcome aboard. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you. I like it in the winter, Chris. Uh, <laughs> this year it's not too bad. Sure, Will. Um, thanks for your question. Uh, no problem if you jumped on a couple minutes late, but uh, <clears throat> we probably didn't 100% say this, but yes, we do use um, Arbiter to assign games. Uh, I can 100% tell you that uh, the way that we have always worked at United Travel is uh, we process our payroll on uh, Monday following a tournament through Arbiter Pay. So that's addition to using Arbiter for a signing um, for a weekend tournament. Um, we try to get everything paid by Monday. Obviously, we have some Monday holidays. If that pushes to Tuesday, it's it's really the the absolute latest. Our, our goal on that side of the payment piece is for you all to, to have been paid for the previous tournament before the next tournament starts. So that, that starts with a Monday morning. And uh, certainly, um, you know, it is a situation that um, we will we will continue. Um, and then Chris Marshall, who you're looking at here, is um, is our assigner up in New York. So he certainly will will be in touch. But make sure that uh, Todd, if you can throw the the link, if you can find it, um, just make sure that everybody, um, you know, is in a situation where. Uh, if you need to get your name on the list, you certainly can. There it is.
Um, Will, uh, Tony, I'm going to come back to your question. I'm just going to finish Will's because he put a second kind of follow up in here. Um, we typically uh, will start to look at some schedules in advance. Um, you know, we'll have more details on that. I would say the we would probably be looking at an early March to mid March next conference call here where we'll be able to answer more of those questions. Um, I think that there's a lot of preliminary work that goes into um, a facility like this uh, with with tournaments going to be running every weekend once we do get a full start full go um, you know I think it's easy enough to have some preparation between Chris and our staff and and, and a particular umpire if if they wanted to come for the next four or five six weekends or they wanted to say hey I'll be there Memorial Day weekend going to take some weeks off in June I'll be there July 4th weekend and work like that. So, um, but we can get a lot more into that probably once once March rolls around. So that's um, that hopefully answers that question for you, Will. Okay, so Tony, you, you ask about the local umpires who have been doing games um, for the local Portland designer. Um, we are not here to um, create tough situations for anyone. Um, we understand that sometimes tough situations are created um, through no one's fault. Uh, and I feel that, you know, from the standpoint of our organization being asked by, you know, our boss who runs facilities all over the country, um, we will come in as a national organization and handle the assigning and handle how the facility runs. That being said, you know, there are certainly going to be instances where hopefully we, we all can work together. Um, and honestly, you know, like I was probably had to do at many points in my career, you know, umpires that at some point have to decide, you know, where they want to work, what they want to do um, without the pressure of whatever it might be. And, um, you know, again, there's an understanding that there's already probably some issues with with coverage in general in the area and now you're injecting four or five more fields a weekend but um we're here to provide opportunities for umpires to improve uh hopefully be able to to help some of the local organizations improve their recruiting as well improve their training as well i think that's what what we can add to to the area and um you know we'll go from there i'm sure there'll be some steps along the way that are a little bumpy and you know, we're, we're here to, to get through them in, in a way that's best for umpires, best for organizations in the area. And um, I think we've, we've done that through the years in, in all of the, the different locales that we're at. And um, I'm sure in each of those, there was some bumpy steps at the beginning. And because hopefully everyone is, you know, in the mode of trying to improve umpiring, try to improve culture. We get through it and and maybe a few years down the road we're looking at it and saying it's stronger than it's ever been so that's that's the best i can answer that question right now um and um certainly if if there's any follow-ups i'm i'm willing to to tackle those as well but i'm going to move on to to brian's question here opportunities to work games during the week on top of the weekend tournaments so um for umpires that are in a situation where they are qualified for, you know, our tournament level baseball and then also uh, collegiate level baseball. Uh, Chris is, you know, the principal assigner for the NYCBL and for the perfect game league in the area. So uh, I believe that tournaments in Cortland, once we start in the summer, will go uh, Thursday to Sunday. You might get a wrapper onto a Monday with championships, but um, if you were in a spot or any umpire was in the spot where Obviously, they were qualified to to work some collegiate summer league and then also um, wrap it with some tournaments. There would be an opportunity to to maybe hang out for a week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever it might be. And um, on some of the busier days, maybe work some tournament games in the morning, collegiate summer league game at night, and then to bridge the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, certainly, both of those leagues um, are pretty much playing every night. So. 
hopefully that answers that one. Chris, you want to just talk a second about that? Just like maybe what that sure. opportunity is for some umpires, not only sure. who are of course. already working college, but. Yeah, I, I mean, we're lucky to have both of those two summer collegiate leagues and the number of teams that are within that area. I was just doing the math in my head and give or take, we're looking at maybe six or seven collegiate teams within, gosh, maybe 45 minutes to an hour of Cortland. So if you were to stay at the college suites, um, in fact, one of the teams actually plays at Gutchess and will be during the week. Um, you know, there's there's definitely opportunities for qualified umpires to to supplement a, a longer stay with games during the week and all within a drivable distance. Um, you know, add even Elmira and places like that. So now you're looking at maybe eight or nine teams. So there's a lot of baseball and summer collegiate baseball that we assign or I assign in the summer in that area. So if 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 umpires are looking to make a longer stay and pick up some work during the week, there's definitely some possibilities there. Chris, I'll let you take that one. Yeah, I'll take that. Um, you know, what we're looking for at the collegiate level is, is obviously umpires that are, are proficient in the two umpire system for the Division Three and junior college uh, conferences that we assign. Um, certainly, I think an umpire that has had some sort of, of secondary training would be nice. Um, you know, umpires that, that work at a, a fairly high level of high school baseball or possibly an umpire that's come out of uh, professional baseball or professional training. Um, you know, but to be honest with you, you know, we're looking for qualified umpires and it, it, we really don't care age, sometimes even experience. If, if umpires are, are willing to come out, we will be running some, some clinics and, and, and camps in the Cortland area. Uh, I would think two or three this summer, both in the two umpire and three umpire system. So um, there's opportunities there to be seen and, and, and learn in those camp settings. And then there's going to be additional times where myself or some other United staff members will be filtering through Cortland and spending time on weekends where we'll have an idea um, and be on site to watch you guys work. So um, if you're a good umpire and you're qualified and, and willing to make the commitment to, to college baseball, something I spoke of earlier, then there's you know a lot of possibilities there. And if you're good, then we'll find you. But you know, anybody that has the aspiration to do so, then, you know, I, I encourage you to reach out to the three of us or one of the United staff on site, and, and certainly we'll do everything to kind of help you in, in, in meeting those goals if that's what you're interested in. One thing I will add to this, gentlemen, is um, if you're looking to talk to someone, we're all available. Uh, our emails are out there. Our, uh, we all answer the phone. We're, we're not just heads on the computer here. So we're, if you have questions and maybe don't feel comfortable about asking right now, please feel free to reach out to any of us. We'll be more than happy to uh, talk to y'all one-on-one. If, if no one has any questions, um, certainly in the chat right now, we'll, I'm going to talk for a second more. So if anything pops through your head, certainly pop it in there. Um, but again, kind of action items is if you want to continue to, to get information um, on Gutchess, on what's going on there, uh, please uh, fill out the Google form, certainly that uh, Todd has has provided there. Um, there is a, a section on a social security number. Um, if you just want to put in zero 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 whatever, that's totally fine. Um, with our payments now being through Arbiter Pay, we actually don't even uh, need that information. Um, so, but I, I know 
guys get uncomfortable with that and I totally understand. So, um, um, I, have, I have one for us new ones. Now, Chris came down here to Binghamton here a couple of weeks ago, discussed like the hats, shirts, and I miss where you get the hats from. Well, but my other question is, is like a navy blue shirt okay? Because you had mentioned black with the gray. Yeah, so I think that um, give us some time here on okay. all of those kind of detailed questions. Um, again, we'll we will um, start to talk more and more about those uh, during the March call. Uh, but yes, yeah, certainly we'll we'll give you the information on hats and and things of that nature um, at that time. Okay. Anyone else? Well, I just want to say for me, thank you all for taking the time. Um, we had somebody, uh, just a heads up, guys. Not sure. Will, you want to help us out with that? Oh. Okay. I'll see if I can't get that fixed right now while we're talking. Yeah, the in the uh, Zoom doesn't doesn't allow copying uh, out of the chat. Uh, you have to. Uh, you can click on it. You should be able to click on it and go to go to a uh, a website. But uh, uh, if it's a link, but um, that's just one of the things that Zoom does. All right. Thank you, Jim. I believe I can probably get this fixed. Okay. Thanks, Todd, for, for taking care of that. So um, I certainly appreciate everybody joining us tonight. Um, again, if, if you have any questions, um, I know Chris and Todd put their emails in there. Um, please reach out to those guys. Uh, I know that there will be questions. Um, there will be things that probably are a little uncomfortable, and um, we certainly want to want to work through those things with with everyone here and um, to go from there. Uh, I'll answer this one. Um, our game fees are gonna range from 67 to 75, uh, depending on time and level with our younger kids at 145 in the in the 67 range and uh, the older kids at, at 75. Um, and uh, in terms of games assigned per day, I mean, that that's always a question that people ask. I mean, from the standpoint of obviously umpires are needed, uh, but at the same time, I don't think anyone wants to put an umpire in a position that they're overworked or trying to take on too many games. So that's more of an individual conversation, Alan, and um, certainly one that as we progress through the March call and into, into early April that, um, you know, we, we can certainly have with you on an individual basis. Um, and Will, uh, as the, on your follow-up here, uh, yeah, our, we have a large number of umpires that are traveling, you know, throughout the country. We also work very closely with local groups in, in many areas. So if you are in a situation where you would like to, to travel and work at some of our other sites, um, you know, that's a conversation to, to be had probably starting with Todd and he can if you want to send him an email, he can reach out and that goes for anybody really. So I believe I got the link to the Google Doc updated. Um, as Alex just said, if, if there's anything that you need to reach out for, please feel free. My email's in there, my phone number's in there. Chris's email's in there. He got it correct that I put the wrong one in. So. Um, 
Todd, that's not the right doc. I just took that down. The doc you put up is is the doc with all the everybody's information. Um, okay, let me try again. <laughs> yeah, we want the form, not the doc. All right. Um, while Todd's working on it, I'll echo the same thing. I mean, one thing that all three of us pride ourselves in is picking up the phone and answering emails. And don't ever think that any question is is not, you know, worth your time. Reach out to us. We we know there'll be a lot of questions and maybe some concerns here. And, you know, we're all three of us are really looking to make this an enjoyable experience for all of you and, and help in any way that we can. So, um, you know reach out to us. Um, I don't think there's too many hours in the day where if not all three of us, two or three of us aren't at our computers and we always have our phones. So um, feel free to reach out beyond tonight and anything we can help with and answer, we will do our best. Todd, you got it, or you want to email? I'm close. Hang on one second. I'm going to try this one more time. Yeah, it's not the link. It's for whatever reason, it won't hyperlink it. Guys, I can follow up with an email um, in the next couple of days. And like I said, if you've got any questions, please just reach out to me directly. And we'll go from there. I apologize about not being able to get this to the function. Okay. All right. Thanks, Chris and Todd. And thank you to everybody for, for joining us tonight. And um, we will be in touch down the road. Again, if you have anything specific, please reach out, reach out to us directly. Good night. Good night, guys. Thank you. Thank you.